today is actually uh, May 3rd and it is the official beginning of Golden Week. Um, uh, people get three days off here, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They usually add, uh, you know, uh, May 1st and 2nd to just complete the whole week. So um, it's the main reason I've decided to go with the Chinkas thing because uh, the highways are so blocked up with traffic. I really don't want to get involved in any of that. And the Shinkansen is always the most efficient way to travel in Japan, albeit expensive. Uh, but it'll get us in and out quick. Nice view of Nagoya Station. Again, Nagoya is a massive city um, and one I plan to visit in the coming months. Uh, we're going to do a couple of shop tours here and there's so much stuff here starting with Liberty Walk and um, uh, Daddy Motor Works and a bunch of other shops that we're going to be seeing cars of uh, at the show today. So. so funnily enough, Tuna is actually called the chicken of the sea. Not a bad breakfast. Italian coffee, the chicken of the sea, and the chicken of the grass, I don't know. I got here at the venue and it's the brand new exhibition center that they built next to the old uh, spherical one uh, that we've been uh, doing events at for so many years. It's a bit sad that they closed that building up but this new one looks gigantic and hopefully it's super cool inside too. Let's check it out. Breakfast, I have no idea where to start because everywhere you point your camera is just perfection. Everything you look at is just sick, new, fresh, like this. Z33 with the RZ34 rear lights and front lights grafted in place. There's a cool Volkswagen lineup here with a couple of bugs at the beginning and then... Hey, hey, hey we made it in. There's Kaizo, tallest guy here. Celica GT4 with full on rally spec lights. Oh my God, look at this S14 here. And what looks like a custom white body. That is beautiful. Hachi Magic, engineered to slide sticker, 
Nigel will be happy to see that. Sweet lemon. And here we have the Daddy Motor Works. GR Yaris powered leaven that we shot and featured a few episodes back. All right, trying to do this in some form of order. Um, starting from the very top corner of the show where I work, wheels have their booth and right next to SS Active. So it's cool to see that these guys are collaborating um, on these wide body complete cars. The selection is as varied and mixed as possible. I remember seeing this wide body GT last year. One thing I really like um, at Wekfest is that you know people keep pushing to get these engine bays like so perfect. Like the, the shaving and the tucking goes um, pretty hardcore here and it's been getting better and better every year. And I just love seeing that people are taking more and more care of engines bays. It's always something I struggled with in Japan. Uh, you know, shooting shooting cars for magazines back in the day, like, you know, 20 years ago now. And having to deal with, you know, people opening their hoods and just reviewing this mess of oily dust and crap. So to see stuff like this really, really uh, makes it even more special for me. <laughs> nice exhaust system on this, 33. Some rotaries here. Looking, oh my God, I haven't seen a looking car in ages. I wonder if this is their old uh, red demo car. 13B and uh, Miyoshi always have the coolest rotaries at Wegfest. And this year they're not joking around either. More rotaries here. Again, uh, collaborations with uh, Liberty Walk and Miyoshi on this uh, wide body F FD. I actually shot this car uh, earlier this year after Tokyo Auto Salon. If it was the same car, they might actually have made another one. CRX, Civic, more rotary awesomeness. How the hell did I walk past this? This is the Coca-Cola themed one. And it's not just looks, it's got engine to, to back it up. So uh, Miyoshi is definitely a shop I uh, I want to visit and spend some time at uh, for the channel because they are not only like old school rotary uh, masters, but they've also embraced the whole uh, aesthetic thing of you know creating um, sort of race car replicas uh, with with tuner cars. Uh, a lot of the old school shops really kind of not follow that trend so much. They kind of resent it because it's kind of going against the old school way I suppose but uh, these guys are just embracing it and killing it absolutely killing it every year they have cool cars and they just um, create amazing collaborations I was saying the variety is as mixed as it gets and I'm not joking the old school Mugens the paint matched covers there is Madeleine they've got two cars a 360 and this 964 Carrera 2. We'll have to take a look at the engine because it's um, pretty phenomenal. Okay, so we've um, asked to see the engine and it's a bit of a work of art. Bye bye stock inlet manifold and six velocity snacks to kind of clean it up. Of course, the car sits on air suspension to get that stance. And there's the controller inside. An interesting take on uh, wide bodies. There's so much stuff uh, already out for this new generation of Hachiroku that um, it's always interesting to see something fresh. And this is definitely quite interesting. Very angular. It fits in the P37Vs perfectly. Tactical art always have some of the coolest EKs. And always great to see that they remove the bonnets for us to enjoy the engine bays. But this, this is really something special. Um, I had a comment from somebody when we posted the Civic meeting uh, from Daikoku saying there was no Del Sol. Well, here's an amazing example of one. Look at the headers on this thing. On work uh, RSs. Spotted a few Germans back here. 
this 993 on T37s and Sport Tech brakes is got nothing to do with stance. This is functional as it comes. Obviously a well-used track car, as is this Advance E46 that we actually saw at Daikoku the other night. And this E46 is absolutely sick on T37s endless monoblocks okay so we're moving on to another the other half of the show pretty much and let's start with the NSX here uh, there'll be a lot of NSX content this month on the channel uh, especially because I'm actually driving an NA1 NSR, NSXR for the rest of this month and you'll be seeing a lot of that this t-top is quite cool too and we've been seeing an insane amount of sick BMWs here. And uh, let me just get a quick look at this E30. Sick Super Celica in yellow with Ferrari logos on the center caps. Really stunning. And it's got the rear hatch conversion a little hint to a little hint of uh, Bosuzoku style and of course this uh, other E30 oh Gonichiwa this uh, this guy's got a S2000 <laughs> engine in oh it's good. your girlfriend <laughs> oh, <すごい. laughs> and Muntek always brings the heat when it comes to like slamming sports cars and even supercars this year they have a mclaren and the sick m2 running the csf uh, charge cooler kit and titanium piping look at that that's pretty amazing it's really cool to see the old and new flat nose conversion on more and more cars. Every year somebody makes one, but this has to be one of the best executions I've seen. So Moontech actually built that really crazy E36 with the uh, LS swap, um, which is not here this year, I think. Uh, but this car kind of follows that theme with the deep green exterior and the orange interior. Super clean E30 next to the 488 that was um, at Tokyo Rosson earlier this year. And check this 34 out. So of course this is a E34 GTT base, transformed by Moontech again. They love their green um, exteriors. I have to say that works quite well. E46 and to finish it up, an R33 GTR. Oh, konnichiwa, Daddy Motorworks. Ah, mita, mita yo. Mototta. Mata ne. And again, tan interior. Yeah, I think Muntek really stands out for creating these kind of like slightly more high end, luxurious looking cars. Um, they really take the interior stuff uh, very seriously and they do it so well and they complete. A very unique type of look. Here's a sweet, sweet beat on little BBS rims. I actually remember seeing this last year. God, I love these little K cars. Proper effort put on the, on the interior. And check out that Gathers. Gathers head unit. The Gathers is, I believe it was JVC uh, collaboration that Honda did. So as part of the dealer options in Japan through the Honda Clio dealerships and also the Verno, you could get the Gathers JVC head unit. I remember because when we first moved to Japan, my dad had a Honda Accord with a Gathers CD player, which was an insane thing to get back, back in the day. And speaking of little cool Honda Beats, this is one that I actually shot for Haltech last year. Um, it actually runs a Haltech Elite 550. And, um, I love the livery, it's like based after the golf coloring. Sits on T37s and 
he's exposed the engine, which has been rebuilt. This is BMW station wagon perfection, and it's part of the Re Rawelt Republic crew, RWR, based out in Hachioji, Tokyo. W126 500L Mercedes, again from RWB Republic. And you kind of got to ask yourself, why isn't Mercedes doing a station wagon version of the new S classes? This is so sick, it's massive. It's literally like a van. Hachiroku Black Limited. Not only is it a rare car, but Modify the right way, hydro. Look at the headers on this thing. Wow. This is one of my favorite Golfs, the R32. I have fond memories of driving this in university. A friend of mine had it. Engine sounds like no other six cylinder. It's not, it's not a straight six or it's not a V6, something in between, right? So it has a really offset kind of beat to it. This generation of Cedric especially sitting on Seeker, work Seeker wheels. Oh, it just looks so good with the pillarless uh, doors, even in the back. Just creates this massive gaping opening. And you see the plush Velo interior. I have to say, these cars just hit so hard. They just, Nissan, whatever you're doing is not working. This is what you gotta go back and, and start doing. So cool to see a bit of uh, VIP action here with this cells here. Check out the listed fenders front and back. Of course, all done in metal. Starts off on the door. Beautifully integrated. And black on black. What a Toyota combo here. Mark II Grande from mid, mid 80s to uh, Supra Celica on these super sick work wheels. It's not every day that you come to uh, a stanced tuning show and you see a $400,000 Bentley slammed on <laughs> massive wheels. And it's the W12 version too, so it's the top of the line, probably half a million dollar worth of car here. Right here. of every flavor but this pandem kitted one from uh, Yanagimoto really stopped me on my tracks uh, sitting on work wheels Meister CRs tons and tons of dish we'll love to see what's under the hood and here I was thinking that this E92 was just a regular E92 with some nice interior touches, but coming up front, the 4 liter V8 has been given a nice set of velocity stacks. Can you imagine what this engine might sound like at full throttle? Cool Z4 and everything, but I'm not really sure about this little stool. If, uh, if you're wondering what that is, that's a Japanese stool for uh, washing your undercarriage <laughs> in, the, in the shower, so he's actually paint match that to the car, hilarious. Six uh, SW20 on the uh, Ray's G7. Period crit top is the best. Let's do a quick walk around. It really deserves it. 
And, you know, it's just so cool to see these older cars, uh, you know, given this much attention and just, you know, it's basically conserving history uh, because you're looking after something that is, you know, an important part of a manufacturer's history. And, you know, there's people that do it the simple way, there's people that do it in a slightly more complex way. You know, it's, it's there for uh, every type of taste and for every type of car guy. And the best thing is, is that people are taking the time and the effort and the investment to keep these amazing cars on the street in their own very unique styles. And God, there is so much variety of styles here today. I'm literally like pointing the camera around without any order or logic because everything is just so, so good. Okay, I'm gonna start this cool lineup I just found. Starting with this um, MX-5 based Stingray conversion, which was offered by Mitsuoka here in Japan. Across to this S13 with uh, T37 and this amazing Pulsar Sunny GTIR with a custom wide body. It's signif significantly wider and it really emphasizes the short wheelbase of the car. And uh, I remember shooting this last year. I remember those um, <clears throat> outward facing exhaust tips. And you can always expect Inazuma work to bring the heat when it comes to Hachiroku's at Wegfest. And this year he showed up with this beautiful Trueno on the old school VR walk racing wheels. He's got the Keihin slide carburetors. These are motorcycle carburetors. Beautifully built car, inside and out, as ever. This is actually a really rare car because um, it's not from Japan. And I remember this car participating in the Speed Hunters Live event I organized back in 2018, I believe. So it's an E46 with a Rocket Bunny kit, straight from Korea with the Korean number plate. Next to a sick lineup of Civics, EK and EG. Takashi's sick ER34 Skyline. One of the cleanest ER34 builds. Looks like a GTR, but it's built for uh, fun street use with the occasional drift outing. And it's sitting right next to this black limited. Okay, big standout for me uh, this year has to be this Mark II Grande. I mean, execution-wise, it stands out because of this uh, shaved engine bay, the velocity stacks, really getting a lot out of the 1M, the power of these cars in the mid-80s. And stance-wise, on point. If you look inside here, you can see the rear suspension, the cantilever uh, on bags. So here's another sick car, RX-8 on Watanabe's. The engine bay is being pushed right back into the firewall. It's got fender mirrors. It's like a mishmash of new versus old, old meets new kind of thing. Really cool to see people push the envelope of you know what they're creating with these cars. And speaking of Mark II Grandes, I just showed you the one with the with the velocity stacks. This is another amazing example of one. Uh, I think exterior wise I probably prefer this one because it's got that two-tone look. These cars just, oh man, they're so good. Love the look of this Spirit R on Workmeisters. It just, it just goes to show that you really don't need to go crazy when it comes to exterior. Like a nice drop, a nice set of wheels with the right fitment. And you got yourself a really sick car, throw in a scoop on it. Okay, I think I've decided to pretty much end uh, the coverage here today. There's just too much to, to go through all. I mean, I tried to be as selective as possible and, you know, hopefully what I've picked is something that resonates with, you know, most of you guys out there. As ever, please let me know in the comments what you'd like to see, uh, what you want to see more of, less of, um, you know check back soon in the channel for more because we got a lot of stuff coming uh, during the month of May. So hope you enjoyed it and until next time, thanks for checking in.